Hey guys, welcome back to another Japan's Frequently Asked Questions with Unrested in Japan. I am your host, Unrested, and let's start some new questions. Okay, our first questions come today from a user named Mr. Seiryoku Zenyo. Hope I said that right. Okay, the first two questions I'm going to answer today actually come from him. And our first question is going to be about etiquette when using a camera or videotaping in Japan. A lot of people asked recently, hey Scott, how come you never take video at your school? And I answered on the last FAQ, hey, I can't. I'd get fired or get sued or get put in jail. Yes, Japan has strong privacy laws when it comes to filming or videotaping or taking pictures. They actually added a chime to phones and cameras, okay? That's why you have that a lot of times on phones and cameras. They added a chime. When you take the picture, you hear the little ba-ching or ding, you know? And they actually added that because they had a huge problem for a while with some people taking upskirt photos. And if you don't know what that means, go ahead and look it up on the internet. I'm not here to teach you about the birds and the bees. Um, and yeah, they had a big problem with, I guess, what you would call, you know, perverts in Japanese hentai, okay? Um, taking pictures on trains, you know, just anywhere in public, or other problems, um, you know, with people videotaping and other people not wanting to be videotaped or have pictures taken of them. And there's also lots of stores, almost any store you're going to go into, they don't want you to videotape. You might think something looks really cool or you like the way the staff is dressed and maybe kimonos or something like that. And maybe if you want to, you can ask one of the staff to take a picture of either them or a part of the store, but most likely they're going to say no. And if they catch you filming um, or taking pictures, they're going to politely ask you to please stop. And if you continue, they're going to kick you out of the store. Okay. And that goes for almost anywhere. I've had friends that have been stopped at even video game centers where you're thinking, well, they're not even selling anything, but they still just don't want you filming or taking pictures for the sake of their own customer's privacy. So be careful when you do that. Try to be polite, okay? If you want to take a picture of someone or videotape someone, ask them. I've actually had Japanese people come up to me and ask me to take my picture or videotape me. And of course, you know, it's not a big deal. Say yeah. And, uh, you know, but they're polite about it. They always ask because they're used to that. Okay, our next question has to do with cash. Now, I've talked about cash before in the past, and I've talked about using an ATM card, and I've talked about using credit cards. Okay, what most of you already know is that Japan is mostly a cash-based environment. That means if you go shopping, you know, if you go to a restaurant, anywhere you're going to be spending money, you're most likely going to use paper cash. That means bills and coins, okay? For the most part, a lot of places don't accept credit cards. Some of your bigger stores, your chain stores, your chain restaurants, they're going to be cool with it. But a lot of things are mom and pop owned still, and they're not big on using credit cards, okay? A lot of people just carry around a ton of cash, okay? There's not a huge crime rate here. People don't get mugged that often, so they really don't have to worry too much about carrying around loads of cash. So some people have asked me, Scott, you know, if I come to Japan and uh, I want to get out some cash, can I use my ATM card from home? And for you, that's really going to be um, an esoteric situation as far as what your bank uh, rules are. Like for going to another country, will they let you take money out? I don't know. That That's specific to each bank. Um, I know with my bank, it was a very small one, but they were still pretty cool about me letting, uh, letting me take some money out of my account all the way in another country. Um, but... Number one, you're going to want to tell your bank that you're using your ATM card overseas before you go. I'm sure, you know, that's common sense right there. Um, you know, if you're using a debit feature on it, let them know you're going to do that too because it's looking like a credit card and your security is probably going to pop up on it and shut it down if you try to use it at a store that's, you know, in another country. That, that looks a little suspicious if you didn't let anybody know about that beforehand. Um, as far as using ATMs overseas in Japan, um, I'm... Sure, most of you know that Citibank has banks over here, so if you already have a Citibank account, you really don't have much to worry about. You still want to let them know you're going to be using it overseas, though. And another thing you can do is let your bank know and see what affiliate they might let you use in Japan. Sometimes they're affiliated with other banks over here, like uh, MUFJ and um, you know Mitsubishi's bank, um, SMBC, um, you know, sometimes there's connections in between there and they'll let you use the ATMs over here with their affiliates. And finally, most 
most major banks are going to let you use the post office ATMs in Japan. And that's actually going to be pretty cheap. When my parents came to visit me here, they used the post office ATM to withdraw money, and it was actually completely free for them. So that's a pretty good deal.、Um, but like I said, you want to check with your bank. It's different with every bank, and it's very specific.、Um, so check that out before you come, and definitely let your bank know that you're going to be using everything overseas, or you're going to get shut down and not get any money out and be stranded. Okay, our last question today deals with piracy. And a lot of people have asked. Scott, if I come over to Japan, do they have a selection of pirated software, DVDs, and CDs just like China does? And to that, I'm definitely going to say no. Okay? Very, very different countries and very different laws. Okay? The police here crack down on that stuff very hardcore. Okay? I've seen people try to sell it in the streets a little bit, and they get shut down pretty quick. Like, I mean, I can see them start in the morning. And by afternoon, they've been shut down, taken away, or within an hour or two, they get taken away. Especially when I see people trying to sell knockoff handbags or accessories from like Dolce and Gabbana and stuff like that. They set up shop here and they get shut down ASAP. So I would say no, there's not a good selection of that. It's definitely not the place to come to if that's what you're looking for. And also, it's not the place to try and do that and sell that kind of stuff. Uh, I even had a friend who made his own CD one time and sold it on the street. And even the police started to get suspicious of him, wondering if it was a copied or pirated CD. I mean, he wasn't, you know, legally set to sell stuff in the street, so it was a little fishy to begin with. But even then, he was looking sketchy selling CDs on the street, even though it was his own creation. So it's definitely something you don't want to get into. You can get deported, sent out of the country, and never allowed to come back again. So stay away from the piracy. Okay, that's it for FAQ today. I hope you enjoyed this session of Frequently Asked Questions. If you have any more questions, please feel free to check out my entire list of FAQs. It's a giant, massive playlist that has almost 40 FAQs in it. Amazing, I know, I know. Or you can just send me an email if I haven't already answered your questions on those. You can always get me at www.youtube/slash unrested. Okay, that's me, I'm unrested. And my channel is Unrested in Japan. Thanks for watching. Yeah!